Hey there, viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. There's a 2013 Dodge Dart. It's got the big four cylinder, and I don't know which one. The money light is on. And did you know that a bad blower motor, like your heater, will make your engine light come on? Well, neither did I until now. Here's the codes that we have stored in this vehicle. Now, it has two problems. It has a problem with the oil pressure switch, and then it has a problem with the blower motor control circuit. So what I want to know is, you know, why? You know, why is ECM looking at? Who cares if the person in the, you know, seat is warm or not, or the blower motor works? So I'm going to look this up for you. I'm going to show you what I found in code set criteria. It was relatively easy to diagnose, you know, once I had looked that up, and I, you know, thought it was kind of ridiculous, but uh, it is what it is, I suppose. Pull it up on your screen for you as I have found it here under code B, like Bravo 10 Echo Alpha B01EA. And that is the blower motor control circuit high. So the high and the low of the code set criteria was the same. And they write, to help improve fuel economy and emissions, the PCM monitors the HVAC settings for coolant temperature model robustness. The PCM receives the HVAC signals bust from the HVAC module. These are CAN-C signals, which identify the blower speed and driver side blend door position. The PCM is required to diagnose these signals and set codes for any failures. On that vehicle, if on a vehicle that is equipped with dual zone, the PCM only performs diagnosis on the left and main door actuator. That's handy. <laughs> uh, it says a few other things there, as you can see. And the set condition is that the PCM detects the motor, blower motor control circuit is above the maximum calibrated threshold, and it will illuminate the mill light. So that's that. That's what we know. It looks at how fast the blower is turning, basically, and how much heat it's pulling from the engine. So this is all gonna be emissions related, uh, which is, you know, I mean, it is what it is. There's, that's what it looks at. Do you think it's ridiculous? I do, but, you know, whatever. So we're gonna pop back in here. Oh, whack my head, and I'm gonna show you. We're gonna take, so those are the codes stored in the engine. Now, typically when there's an issue like this, there's gonna be codes stored in the HVAC module. Now, I did a full system scan, and it's got codes littered all over it. But we're gonna go into uh, the HVAC, so heating, ventilation, AC. We'll pull codes out of there. I expect we'll have the similar code. Uh, blower motor control circuit short to ground, okay? So let's, let's think about this for a minute. We don't even need a wiring diagram. So we have a blower motor and then we have a resistor or a, a controller of some sort. So it's gonna be fed power and ground and you know a control wire, you know, probably pulse width modulated. It's gonna pulse that resistor, if you will, or module. And then the module is gonna send a certain amount of voltage you know, to the blower motor. Now I can only assume, uh, now I know here it says control circuit. What I think it's looking at is the act what we would consider a feedback circuit. So it sends power into the blower motor so, you know, power should go into it and then it should come right back out of it on the ground. And then when it wants to turn that motor on, it, you know, grounds the ground and then that voltage uh, is pulled down. So, let's see, um, you know, how it would think it's shorted the ground. So we have power going in and let's say, you know, you guys have seen us do videos on uh, fuel pumps, um, blower motors, uh, cooling fan motors, you know, should have power in, power out. And then that ground shouldn't go to ground you know, unless it's grounded. So if there's an open in this motor, it's not gonna see any voltage coming out of the motor. So it's gonna assume it's shorted the ground. And I think that's our case here. Uh, I just checked it simply with a test light. But what's nice is we'll go back out here into live data and we can actually see blower motor voltage feedback. So this is going to be the ground side of the blower motor. Right now the blower motor is turned off. So we're, I'm just gonna get them up where you guys can see them. I will put that into a graph we'll slow that down and that goes up to 65 let me change so we want our minimum at zero our maximum at you know we'll say 15 volts okay uh, because we're just going to be going from battery voltage to ground and as that blower motor turns on the amount of voltage out of the ground side should go down and that high it should be zero because it should be fully grounded okay so i'm going to turn on the blower motor and so we're on speed one right now. I would expect our feedback voltage to be good and steady and possibly, I don't know, eight volts. I'm just guessing because we're on a low speed. But we can see 
that our feedback voltage is bouncing all over the place. And all this is looking at is the ground side coming out of that motor. And as we increase in speed, you know, our voltage should be stepping down and getting lower and lower and lower and closer to ground. The closer to ground you go, the faster that motor is going to run, you know, because it's resisting right now. Stop resisting. So we'll bring her up a few beans here. I'll bring her up on speed four. It doesn't get a whole lot better. Let me kick her up on high. That is full beans right there. The blower motor doesn't sound too healthy in here. Okay, and we can see we've got a little bit of chatter across the bottom. Now that could be the refresh rate of the you know, process data here. But that should be hanging right around zero or close to it. What's the command? 87%. So there's another way we can look at this because it's either losing contact, you know, brushes are shot, or we're losing power going into the motor. So we could have a bad blower module or bad resistor. You know, it's not keeping constant power to it. Um, let's say the resistor or the module wasn't really sending a great signal to that blower motor our feedback voltage should still be nice and steady. It should be more linear. You know, it should be smoother as it goes up and down and you know, can't control it, if that makes sense to you. So I'll turn it back down and we'll see. And if you guys have seen, uh, seen me graph uh, bad fuel pumps, you can almost envision a bad spot on that motor where it's open then close, open and close. Where the brush makes contact, then it doesn't. You know, we're not getting our feedback voltage. And we can simply see that also with the test light. Let's see, we'll you have to give me the all one-handed hand job. I gotta hold you. So, up here, whoa, hang on, folks. Up here is the blower motor. Uh, where my point, where's my point at, perhaps? Right up there is the blower motor. This is the blower module, okay? Uh, don't really care how it works at this point, but this is your resistor. And this is our wires coming out to the blower motor, so we should have a constant power. This is what we wanna make sure is staying constant we can see it is now the blower motor is on and it's still you know still still goofing up on our scan tool let's see you guys can see there it's still you know acting wonky okay so one thing we know is we have a constant power so it's not a lack of jiggly bits here coming into it it is not a lack of power okay uh, full power now we're gonna come into the ground side and we should see a blinking light if, it, if the brushes are bad. And we do. Let me see if I can just stick that right there. I don't know how well the camera picks up a flickering light. Okay, but if we think about this, we have power going into it. We should have power coming out of it. That light should be nice and steady, but dim. And the, the higher speed we go, I'm gonna crank her up on high speed, that light should go out. And it does. And then I'll crank it back down and our light should come on and be dim but be steady and hopefully the camera picks up the flicker I don't know if it does but I know one flicker it will pick up Let me enhance enhance that's fun right unenhance we'll come back out and I'm gonna shut it off and we should see it flicker all the way to a dead stop okay so right now let me turn my light back on. We sh that, that 12 volt test light should be lit up because we should still have a constant power on it. Let me just check. We do. We have a constant power going into the motor and there should be a constant power coming out. And there is not. However, let me give her the old wackaroo here. Hold on, folks. I know this is going to... Oh, there it goes. Never mind. So now we have constant power because I was going to smack it and it heard me. So now the brushes are making contact in that motor. We have power in, power out. Um, we know we have you know, control with our uh, blower resistor because it is turning it on. And we simply just have a bad blower motor. And what the ECM is looking at is that black wire uh, or how it's being processed through the you know, resistor there. Uh, it's looking at feedback voltage and it thinks it's shorted the ground because we'll go like this and we'll shut it back off because sometimes it lands on an open spot or the feedback voltage is really bad and keeps going open, which is kind of like a bad ground or it's gonna, oops, shut it off here. 
it's going to assume bad ground because it's not seeing 12 volts or it's not seeing the battery voltage it expects. Right there. The computer is going to see feedback voltage as zero, which it shouldn't. It should be seeing it as battery voltage. So let me give it a whack. Okay, so now our feedback voltage should be battery voltage. And it is. So that it would be happy with. When it sees it low like that, it's just going to set a code for short to ground. I'm hoping this all made sense. So now everybody's like, oh, what about the oil pressure switch? Well, <laughs> It doesn't have the bad oil pressure switch. They actually have an updated part number on those for those that you are wondering about that. There's a three wire, five volt sensor. And right now, I'll get in here and show you that real quick. I know it doesn't pertain to this video, but just in case uh, Chrysler does have a service bulletin, like say a new number, we'll go into live data. This one is open circuited, so it's reading, you know, 100 PSI. Let me just find it here. Oil, pressure, switch for the VTEC, and there we are. It's open circuited. Uh, I didn't bring the voltage up, but it's at 4.6 volts, so oil pressure switch is open. Uh, so that's that. Let me get a new blower motor and show you what a good one looks like. Let's do the Miracle Modern Television. Well, bam, there we are. I decided to go OEM, why? Because it's made in America. So that's the blower motor. I haven't even looked at it yet. I'm not gonna show the process, well, because simply I can't even see it. Uh, pretty fair amount of the white mold growing on the floor here. I just want to get in and out real quick. Ooh, Ooh it's like Christmas. It's Christmas time, it's self-made auto. It's a song I just made up. So there it is. There's your squirrel cage. Oh yeah, because I want it to fit. Looks like uh, just three screws. Um, this one has passed, it says so right on it, pass. We'll get this plugged in. This says made in Korea. Right on the tag. What's Chrysler doing? They're trying to lie to us. Because that right there says America. Made in America. Well, they must be talking about the sticker of the box. Either way, whatever. Uh, expensive little booger it was. It was almost a couple hundred bucks, I think. Uh, but not my problem. I just wanted to make sure it fit. And then here is the uh, most current part number on the oil pressure switch uh, for those of you that want. I think in the service bulletin, the last part is AA, AA. Now it's Alpha Bravo, and that's made in New Mexico. So not that it matters, but just in case you're wondering, I'll we'll have a look at this thing too. Pretty easy to change. There it is. Just looks like the ones they use on the Hemis that fail all the time. Uh, pretty common Chrysler problem. So. So that's that. I'm gonna get these parts swapped out. We're gonna come back and look at the good blower motor so you know what it looks like, what the feedback voltage looks like, and we'll get the guy's light cleared so hopefully he can go get it inspected. All right, so the parts are swapped out. And just real quick here, you can see the oil pressure uh, sensor is working correctly now, so it's at a half a volt. I don't think I showed it before, but it was stuck uh, at or near five, and we can see our oil pressure's good. And then what we wanna do, we will back right back out of here. We'll go back to the HVAC because we're going to have to clear the codes out of this and clear the codes out of the ECM. We're going to go to live data and then we're going to go to our feedback voltage and our command signal and we'll pull them back up. I'll put that back in a graph for you. I haven't looked at this yet, but it should be good and smooth. So we'll set our min max. We'll do our max at 14. Oops. Hopefully I don't have to redo that. Nope. We'll slow that down and then we can see our feedback voltage. So it's the voltage come back on the ground side. It's at or near battery voltage. Now I will take and turn it on one notch here. We'll put it on number one. And like I said, I thought that should drop probably around eight volts or so. It should be relatively steady and we can see that it is. All right, our command is at 25%. And we see that's pretty steady. And then we'll bump her up another notch up on let's see here there's number two uh not not right now right. we can see our voltage drops more the the higher the speeds we take it the more it should drop all right i'll come up on number three of 
course, you're going to have a little bit of chatter across there, but nothing like we had before. All right, of course, it is a brand new motor, too, so the brushes haven't broken in. We'll go up on speed five. It's a brand new OEM motor, nonetheless. But as those brushes break in, that'll, that'll get a little steadier. And then we'll go right up on high. And we can see our voltage drops right to nothing. Or near zero, so about half volt. So it must not be commanded at 100%. Uh, let's back back out of here and it's not. You can see our command is only at 87% for whatever reason. But you can see the steps in that are a lot better than it was before when it was dropping around all over. And then when we shut it off, our voltage should go back up to battery voltage as that motor winds down. Oops, that's a number one. Actually, let me hit the off button. Okay, that's off. And you see that steps back up to battery voltage. Now I'll show you with the test light here, because I still have that down here. I've got the custom wedge. There's our test light. I'm gonna reach up, we're gonna turn it on. Okay, so that is low. Let me turn my light down, dim here without knocking the whole mess off. Turn my light off, okay. So that is low speed. Now I'll turn it back off. Now you guys remember how it was blinking before? Oops, oops, wrong button. Okay, I turned it off, our light should get bright. Now I'm gonna turn it on low speed again. Light should dim, and the higher the speed we go, the dimmer that light should get, but it should stay nice and steady. So I'm gonna start cranking it up, and when we get up on high, it should be almost out. Is and I lower the speed back down, then we go back to off, and our light gets nice and bright, or it should, as that motor stops spinning. And then we see our feedback voltage from that little test we just did with Tesla. It's good and smooth, you know, it steps down as we brought the speed up, so that's that. Now, the important thing here, whoops, is to not do what I do. Now I get click happy. We want to go through, get back in here clear the codes out of the HVAC unit, then we'll go and clear them out of the engine controller. And then it should be golden. So there's that. And then I'll back back out and I'm just gonna do a quick erase. Uh, a lot of the codes that were in the BCM and uh, other items were just old history codes. So anyhow, we'll let them clear out, ship it. So that's it on a Chevrolet. It's not a Chevrolet, that's a Chevrolet. That's it on the Dodge Dart, I uh, forgot about you. It's the next day. Um, so hopefully you guys understood what we were doing there on that blower motor, looking at that feedback circuit or the ground circuit on the blower motor. Power in, power needs to come out until it's grounded and depending on what speed it's at is how close it pulls that to ground so we could clearly see you know, using the test light, we could see it using scan data. Uh, the feedback voltage on that was wonky. The HVAC unit sees that, sends that message out on the data bus. The ECM uses it to make some calculations of heat loss, I suppose, on the engine, and it's all you know emissions related mumbo jumbo. Uh, but in either case, uh, to answer your question, yes, the blower motor can turn your engine light on and make a final inspection in the great state of New York. So that's that. Hopefully you guys understood it. If not, go down there, leave your questions, comments, criticisms, concerns in that comment box below. While you're down there, subscribe or ring that bell. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.